I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. Today I've got Rob, and I've got Neegs, and this is episode 10. How's it going, guys? It's going good, like every week. <laughs> <laughs> it's going great. Uh, happy to talk about many things again. Crazy, yeah. crazy day. We're recording on the August 5th, and um, yeah, just um, the Japan situation impacted uh, I think we start by that. Yeah, the markets. Yeah, are I think that's huge. <laughs> like this, the, the markets are just crumbling down around us. We're sitting here <laughs> like the wreckage, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's pretty bad. Um, you've seen Nix. You you uh, posted pointed a video at me about a guy who uh, explained what's going on pretty well. Uh, maybe we could attach that to this uh, to this video. But um, it was interesting. It's it's funny how like that was the the keystone of the entire bridge coming down uh you, that got pulled out you want to talk about that sure yeah so it's basically some um mechanism that that is where um when one country has some interest rate compared to another country and then there is a gap i'm gonna go the very simple way there is basically yeah. arbitrage and so when this situation inverse which um for the case of japan the currency is really not used to appreciate. It usually goes down kind of forever. And now it did appreciate. And because the Japanese government uh, raised interest rate to combat inflation, which is very rare uh, in Japan. And now it creates a major situation where uh, people are basically being liquidated and it also impacts the Japanese banks who made those loans. So it really a ripple effect in all the markets, all over yeah. the different industries, because now it, it is a major impact in, uh, in anything financial, basically. I wow. think there was like, like the idea is like, there was a, like, there's a presumption that lots and lots of people had that, that Japan will never raise their rates. I mean, I say never, but that was the presumption that it's stable and then things changed and they did. And what what ended up happening was that presumption led them to leverage other trades, and leverage is dangerous, right? Anybody who's traded Bitcoin with leverage knows <laughs> that that that's it's right, very easy to get liquidated, you know. And it's really common so, practice in uh, yeah. you know fi traders, like it's really common practice, and really yeah. the usually the yen doesn't appreciate, right? Like it right. is definitely not a currency that is known to appreciate, and because of that the whole setup of the the bets we could say that those traders were were taking were definitely leveraged heavily in that direction and so this sudden change i think the if i remember correctly it appreciated more than 10 percent yeah. is yeah. is a huge change yeah. that it, definitely this... uh, caught everyone pants down uh, I could yeah say. it's like a house of leveraged cards that's what came down like that's right <laughs> so and they, that's so right. they said this is worse everything. They said this is worse than, if I'm if I recall correctly, this is worse than the Black Monday crash of 1987. Oh, I haven't checked that. Possibly, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah, I didn't check those yeah. numbers, but but it is definitely crazy. The, it's crazy because, again, as everything is interconnected now. Um, a lot of those big um, traders are institutions need cash they need to be able to kind of sustain um maintain the bleed like be able to mm -hmm. um not you know die out of that and because yeah. of that like everything is basically in a, in crisis mode and we've seen yeah. that um actually on bitcoin uh we've seen bitcoin going very quickly down to i think on KuCoin it even hit 48k but i yeah, see on coin market it it's about 49.5 and yeah. now it hovers around 53 um 54 i see on KuCoin just hit 54. so we don't know if it's uh temporary i think we talked last time that uh cryptocurrencies um are not immune to those huge market shock um, right. however we've seen, and again, things are never certain, right? But we've seen that most of the time crypto actually recover much faster than, uh, the rest of the industry. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I am looking at, I mean, it's, it's definitely down a lot, but like, 
you know, you just zoom out. I mean, this is so naive of me. I know, like, I'm not a trader, but for me, I, I know people are getting hurt, and and a lot of uh, industries are, are reeling from this. But when you zoom out, you know, we've had way bigger drops over time, and on not not maybe not bigger drops on single day. I think there's that. No, I can look at 86. This is 87. This is bigger than 87. Um, but overall, I, you know, I wouldn't be, it would surprise me 0% if in a few days things are good again. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, it seems to, uh, these kind of shocks shock the system and then it, it accommodates it. I very rarely, um, do, does that, does something other than that happen? I mean, in 2008, that was, right. that was a bigger thing, right? <laughs> I was going to say that. Big, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I remember 2008 yeah. and everyone yeah. had to put a lot of money to make sure it wasn't all collapsing. Oh, absolutely. But that was, that was not this one day shock that we're talking about of, of changing industry, uh, uh, interest rates. That was a fundamental flaw in the way banking banks were operating. Uh, like that was systemic. And I don't know, this just seems like. You know, people, a bunch of people got hurt by leverage, leveraging their things. I, I know it's probably naive, but like the, the yeah. crashes we've had in the past are way worse than this. The it problem way is longer. these are bonds, right? These are yeah. U.S. bonds. So I didn't go into detail and yeah. it wasn't important in terms of the mechanism. But if yeah. we're talking about the impact, it is actually very relevant. So the whole system was um, borrowing on the... Japanese side at a mm -hmm. lower rate and then buying U.S. bonds at a higher rate so that basically if you do the math, you make a profit, right, without doing much. However, with the raise of the yen, then now um, those uh, bonds on the, those U.S. bonds are not bringing them enough revenue to cover for the initial for the initial loan right and i mean on top of that you say that they also make some margin trading with on it like they take leverage yeah. out of it so it is even worse and and the problem is those people are never playing with their money right they're no. playing with yeah. insurance money from people they're, yeah. they're like it is basically what the most of the money is in those markets so it is difficult to evaluate the the impact of it because those leverage can be crazy and they can be kind of um layered right and it, it can be really crazy at the end of the day so you you don't really know and if the markets panic like that there is a reason but we will see after a few days maybe whenever yeah. this episode goes live um it will already be calm or way worse exactly uh the last time something bad like really a tank like this was 2020 from february to to march and we'll see if it's worse than that um we'll see yeah it was the COVID, yeah. right when yeah. when COVID yeah. happened um yeah. it was it was um uh, so i don't want to get political and all that so I'll, I'll be really brief but we had some kind of um similar event um in 2011 or something um mm -hmm. with h1n1 and then because of that, I immediately saw that, like, I immediately thought that it would be an overblown crisis. And so I saw that at a major opportunity in the market. I was like very happy. I bought <laughs> some Litecoin, if I remember correctly. Yes. And I was, it was really yes. a very good operation because in a few months, the market completely recovered. And yeah. that's one of the elements I take to compare to uh, fiat systems. The fiat system didn't recover as well at the time. Like it took a long time because it was really connected to the economies being like shut down everywhere. So obviously yeah. it wasn't looking great until they started to give money everywhere. The, the Basically the financial indicators were really looking bad, but then crypto started to recover and yeah. it was actually a pretty good period for crypto. And that. even for us now, I mean like Bitcoin hit 49k actually twice today it hit it hit 49k um that's shocking right uh, again not trading advice <laughs> i'm not a trader uh but you know if i had you know a big wad of cash right now i would absolutely be buying that and well i'm, maybe be I'm seeing in other channels that asked actually the number some people were looking for was 50 that they oh, wanted yeah. to yeah. enter into the market or yeah. buy more and as Niggs and I, we, I think you were looking it up before me, but 
I was showing that it was 40, low 49, and you said 48. I mean, that's I say, definitely I think, a buying sign for those people. I think uh, in the last episode, you were talking about 50, uh, 52, I think, or something like that. And then yeah. I mentioned that I wouldn't be that surprised if it was going to yeah. 48, 49. Mm -hmm. And I, I we're there now. Um, however, if it is spending too much time there, which it isn't, right? It just rebounded to 54. But yeah, we're 54, if it goes yeah. back down and it tests that again, um, the next stop is uh, around 44. But that's a much, much stronger level. Uh, so I, I would doubt we would go lower than that unless there is like major justification for, yeah. for this return, right? Hey, you know what's happening though? Uh, while Bitcoin took tanked like that, it, it was still operating. You could still move Bitcoin wherever <laughs> you wanted to. You know, like, right. there was there's was no issues oh, of goodness. me sending Bitcoin to you. What about at uh, Charles Schwab? How was that going? Well, that's a good call. I think just a yeah. good statement. Just a few yeah. minutes ago, we were just looking at that and sites from Wells Fargo to Schwab to XXX. I mean, all these different sites that were financial organizations, banks, and otherwise were totally offline for a little while people were trying to log in they couldn't get in and Neegs, you had a theory on why that that would be of course at this moment in time dealing with the stock market what was that statement you made yeah so i think there are intermediaries that have to ensure all those transfers right because like to make sure we have this system where people that are remote can operate you know um smoothly you have intermediaries that make sure they provide the liquidity and i think as you can see that basically all the markets, um, the centralized market have hit their triggers, right? Um, they started to stop trading for the most part. Um, something that again, never happens on crypto. You have actually what, what should happen on the market. Um, but basically, um, on top of that, also services now are preventing you to make moves because I would probably think that those intermediaries also hit their trigger. That's yep. just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. We yeah. could see it because yeah. it was, uh, at least in what I was looking at, um, looking at some of the uptime and downtime detectors, it looks like everything is being hosted at Amazon or at least some <laughs> infrastructures related to Amazon. So it's, um, it's quite amazing to see something like that happen in the market. It's bad for some and it's good for others. That's the one thing we always have to remind people is that as somebody's selling, somebody is buying. Um, and so you can choose to be at different positions in time that can be beneficial, just like we were just speaking about. There were people waiting for that 50,000 um, hit on there's right. caveat. Yeah, There's and one I, caveat to that, yeah, though, that, because uh, because on, on, on leverage trading, there's uh, people uh, who are getting liquidated and people who are getting those liquidations, right? So that's... That's going to the yeah, exchanges. Yeah, it's not really, well, of course. it's not really a buy and sell. And we just saw one point three billion dollars worth of liquidations between that's all right. the dexes and sexes. So, <laughs> that's, so it's not all buy and sell. <laughs> it is supposedly um, it is a part of a healthy movement for the market. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. that's how it's supposed <laughs> to be uh, looked at, right? Like those yep. things are required. I'm sure. Uh, people who are part of those liquidation are definitely yeah, not in that opinion. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but it is, yeah, it, it is the way it works. Like definitely the market uh, washed a ton of uh, a ton of money from the market cap. It, it also uh, dropped the small, the lowest since 2022. So yeah. basically raised all profits from 2023, 2024. Yeah. So... Um, it is a, yeah, it is a huge drop. Um, definitely, I think the alts also have taken a huge hit. Uh, they've been taking a hit now since a week or so. Um, yeah, it is a, a difficult uh, situation for uh, the markets. But I think that at the end of the day, um, August has also historically been a bad month for crypto. And September has historically been a good month. So yeah. let's see. Let's see what happens. Yeah. That's right. Um, now we're not over yet because um, yeah. <laughs> we just—I I just added yeah. that one 
Um, but it's more about uh, talking about that. It, it's continuing. So Genesis is going to distribute $1.5 billion of um, crypto to their users. So just for context, so they were part of the FTX um, web of interconnected <laughs> yeah, services. So, <laughs> so they were not yeah. FTX directly, right? But they were connected to some FTX guarantee and founds. And basically all of that is being settled right now. And you will see many different services starting to distribute um, a few billions. There is 1.5 billion on Genesis. I think there is one other billion on another service. So there, there is a few more coming to the market. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be like this unending supply of people like get you know uh, giving back tons of big uh, Bitcoin. I don't. Uh, it just seems like there's another one. There's another one. I know that we were expecting this one. It's just like the right. Germany's thing, the Mt. Gox thing, this thing. It's a ton of it's a ton of money uh, moving moving out. Anyway, I didn't uh, put, I didn't put it there because it, yeah. I think it's kind of a given. But uh, micro strategies increase their Bitcoin holding. As usual. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. With that kind of money, I would buy it too. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's All awesome. right. So can I tell you where I was last week? Oh my goodness. Yeah, where go were ahead. you? Yeah. Where were so you, I, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the uh, Bitcoin conference in Nashville. Um, mm -hmm. and it was it was fun. It was um it was it was big. Uh, the the place where it is the music hall the music center I think it is city music center uh, is a big building um, there was one two three I think four different speaking area stages um, I I can't say I had the attention span to sit there and watch people in chairs talk to each other so I can't report on a bunch of these talks <laughs> um, there's a bunch of the for me the interesting part was over in the kind of vendor area. Yeah. Um, so it was mostly miners in there. There's like a ton around mining in terms of machines, in terms of like housings, in terms of cooling systems, in terms of like a lot, whole bunch of stuff around mining. And then a whole bunch of stuff about like wallets, secure wallets, um, and platforms and lending. And like, there's, there's a, that area was like the size of, I don't know, maybe a football field. It was wow. huge. Yeah, it was it was, I can't say I've ever been to football, so maybe I'm wrong, but it was huge. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. Um, so there was a lot of really interesting stuff in there. Um, so that was kind of neat. I, I do encourage people to go to these. Uh, and then around it was a lot more uh, events of side events, like Litecoin had an event. Um, There's a couple other chains that had events around it. Um, There's some pretty well-known kind of developers and evangelizers, crypto evangelizers who were there. Uh, it was, it was, so overall it was, that part of it was really kind of fun. And of course the, the finale was, you know, Edward Snowden speaking, RFK speaking. Um, it was, uh, and of course Trump speaking. Uh, so overall, uh, I did get, uh, because I know somebody who works at Bitcoin magazine. So I do admit I got a free ticket. Uh, the tickets, I think, <laughs> were 200 and something dollars for the industry pass. Um, so that's how much that cost. I, I assume the, the normal pass was probably 100 something. So uh, I do recommend it. I think uh, I think there's another one. The next one is in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, that probably even a bigger venue there. Uh, highly recommend. I think uh, I think people should go to it at least once just to see what the latest and greatest is, especially if you're into mining or if you're into like Bitcoin centric, not, not even if you're a maxi like I'm not. And I, yeah. I, there's a lot of other stuff there. So highly recommend. When is when is the one in Vegas? Do you do you recall? I, it's in May, I think. May, May. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's so nice. I and again, you, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And again, we've seen uh, that it is being uh, like looked into by um presidential candidates so oh, RFK yeah. Yeah. when yeah. there trump when there yeah. so it is again a great thing to see that um basically those guys they they want voters right and yeah. so the fact that they acknowledge that there is um there is some benefit for them to start to say they're positive around crypto means that crypto is actually reaching slowly the masses. It is a yeah, very yeah. interesting situation. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we hope it continues like that. Um, and yeah, I think Trump made 
crazy pledge that were really <laughs> extremely exciting. So I, uh, I have yeah. to say, I, I've never actually watched Trump speak before. And I, I have to agree that I understand why people kind of like it. Like he's definitely a, a great cheerleader for himself and the things that he wants to do and the things that he is, you know, the people that he's kind of pandering to. So it's a Bitcoin crowd, right? And so he fires off shots at Gary Gensler because we all hate that guy because yeah, that guy's yeah. in the way, right? Uh, he'll fire, fire shots. Him. Yeah, he fires shots off at, at Elizabeth Warren. And it, yeah, yeah, the crowd is cheering because, yeah, those people are in the way of progress. And um, and so I see what he does. And it, 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 it that part of it was fascinating to really, you know, that the sad part was for me, right, is is he absolutely is just firing off shots and like saying what people want to hear. It is very clear that he really doesn't know what this thing is. Uh, it's a thing people invest in. Uh, you know, that's it. There's not really another side to it. Well, that's right. right. That the guy's old, right? Almost the guy is yeah, pretty yeah. old. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, yeah. he's probably very busy. I doubt he has so much time to get into yeah. that technology, really. What's interesting is that whoever really we're talking about Trump, but I think it's the same for RFK or whoever is a politician and looking into that, who is not really into it. It means yep. that they are now getting people around them who are yep. giving them apparently the right, the right problems, totally. Gary Gensler, right? Yeah. The, yeah. So it seems <laughs> the that talking point. it is, yeah, it is a good thing to see that at least there is being surrounded by people who are uh, helping, I think, going the right direction. We'll yeah. see if uh, it actually happens. But I mean, it is encouraging for crypto. Yeah, it, it's definitely positive in that it's getting traction at the political level instead of being kind of laughed at, you know, <laughs> as it was originally. Um, and, you know, and, and I do think actually RFK and Lewis do understand what it is more uh but i don't they're all politicians right so they're all kind of like this is my side and this is what how it would work for us and i honestly think the democrats should do the same thing maybe it's not maybe like it's it's a tool right it's a platform it is it's, a tool. it's a yeah, that's right and it's it doesn't need to be a political thing any more than a hammer does um so the democrats just need to kind of wrap around the, who they're going to pander to and here's how bitcoin <laughs> benefits us and i think I think they've got some advisors doing that. They've got, what's her face? Yeah, uh, I've, I've read Harris. that they, there yeah. is some movement also uh, yeah. on the Democrat Party to to basically have crypto represented. Again, I think yeah. it is uh, the normal evolution of a technology that is now getting noticed, right? Yeah. And, and yeah, I think that's great. I mean, if uh, what RFK or Trump uh, said, like, Basically, if those guys get elected, I mm -hmm. think one said they want to buy Bitcoin every day until they have like 400, uh, 4 billion Bitcoin. And then yeah. the other guy said he want to put like as reserve on Bitcoin. So that would be crazy. Like that would mean the a Trump? monster yeah. bullish moment. So I, I, I think the, Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I think the, the, the path there was RFK said that and then Trump said it too. They have two different yes. numbers. Um, yes. And, and, the entire idea there is Bitcoin is going to go up for 20, 30 years, and then it will go up faster than our debt does. And therefore, we'll be able to pay down the debt. Pay I think the that's, debt. Exactly. That, that's the entire idea there. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I, I can't say I've got any sort of background to be able to say that that's going to work, but it just doesn't seem like that's a better, that's a better path. I would rather they <laughs> tighten their belts. You know, like doesn't I'm not talking about party. I'm not talking about politician. It just seems hoping for this kind of lottery thing to happen for them. <laughs> you know, that's timed right. No, I I agree with happens, you. However, you know? <laughs> if they use some of the money they already steal from you and they are yeah. forced to buy Bitcoin with it, that's funny. I mean, it's already that they <laughs> yeah. won't spend on something else. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. certainly, but overall, the right approach is to freaking stop you know, having a gigantic deficit and, you know, fix that part. Uh, it's just that's giving right, him an excuse I, to keep, you don't keep say that to politicians. Same. That's, no, that's how right? they, that's how they are like you <laughs> right. needed. Yeah. I, so I think, I mean, it's great for us. I mean, don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. <laughs> you know, the but, more it's talked but, about, the more people are talking about it. It doesn't yeah. matter which party you're in. The more they're yeah. talking about it, the more non-coiners, 
right? I mean, people yeah. who don't have any cryptocurrency, yeah. people that are on the fence. Oh, okay, so here's what's going to happen, right? They did this for Social Security, right? They said, okay, we've got this, we got this account, and then they started loaning against the account, uh, and that's what <laughs> yeah, they're going to yeah. do. Right, they're yeah, going to have this yeah. reserve. Oh, look at yeah. all that money we have. Because well, yeah, well, there is spend... always someone to do that. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about yeah, something true. else. I'm just saying, yeah. I'm talking about in general, yeah. we're talking about politics, of course, at yeah. that point, and what they're going to yeah. do with the finances. I'm saying, yeah. if nothing at all happens from what they're saying, yeah. the fact that they are saying it, the fact that they are part oh, yeah. of it, the fact that it is part of the media, the fact that it yep. is being mentioned, the fact Super that it positive. is being written about, is in a way a type of marketing that that brings awareness to, to a much totally. broader audience even totally. than before. So I, yeah. I think that no matter what, it's a great thing, whether or not we'll have a BTC reserve, whether or not they'll <laughs> loan out funds against it, whether or not that they'll play the lottery and hopefully pay off everything in 30 years. I don't know anything about that. The yeah. fact no, is, the most is that Trump really, is mentioning The most important our, is yeah. that the fact they carry that message, like yeah, Bitcoin, like, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm going to say Bitcoin is not important, right? right? What's important is that representative, like politicians who want to be representative of us yeah. or Americans in that situation are taking the idea of sovereign currency mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the debate, right? And yeah. they are respecting that. And in, so far that they are also talking about banning or make sure never CBDCs, uh, yeah. CBDC happen under their watch. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it is huge for financial freedom, really. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's the key thing. Trump did say he was he yeah. would outright prevent CBDCs at least during his presidency. Right? Yeah. That was one of the things. I don't know if RFK said that or not. I don't recall. I'm sure he did but, because uh, again, but, like it is what Bitcoin like crypto people are asking for and now it seems this crowd is big enough or probably because you know how it works right they probably made sure. many models they probably did many studies and their result is don't neglect crypto people so, so yeah i think <laughs> that's why right. they're there otherwise they wouldn't be there right they wouldn't yep. bother um, yeah. talking to those yeah. people us and so, yeah, I think that it means that now they have to consider the, the most critical elements and Bitcoin is the first and probably CBDC is maybe even the first, right? Yeah. 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 So that's their talking yeah. point. That's their talking yeah. point. And maybe well, the opposing talking point is is like from the Democrat side is yeah Bitcoin and we want CD CBDCs like yeah. you know like, like you know yeah crypto and this you know <laughs> so yeah that's the know. thing right I think for a long for a big part of my life I thought yeah. that um, taxing people and having the government helping was a good solution but I I didn't understand like a government could never actually uh, work. The bigger it is, the most impossible the thing. The most it's a yeah. dream that it yeah. that it's supposed to work to do the all dream, those things. Exactly. Yeah. Like and yeah, or I an think experiment. that it's uh, it's difficult. Like yeah. you think that it will help uh, if you actually do that, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it. Uh, just I more get called, corruption. Uh, utopian all the time for wanting no government, and I'm like, "What do you mean utopian? That that's you. Like, like how many thousands of years have we had a government, and it still right. doesn't do what we want it to do?" <laughs> like, but I think hoping, it's not talked you know? a lot about, right? It's more like it's yeah. not that you don't think that if all the things were centralized, you wouldn't have a, something that would be more efficient. It's just that it's gonna never, it's never gonna work. It will be corrupted. It will be yeah. like it's just, it's a dream. Like <laughs> it, it is a dream. Is. That's utopian thinking to me. It's, a, it's, it's good. It's, it's good yeah. for a while, and then it yeah. has to be restructured. It has yeah. to be rebuilt, or it falls yeah. into entropy. It and, just never works as it get, grows yeah. bigger. Like maybe small, I could get small. into it. Let's talk yeah, tech. Like right. Some, right? Yeah, let's, some tech stuff. Let's let's <laughs> move on. We'll, we'll yeah. get into some politics here, and let's make sure we don't do that. I'll just get all that. 
Um, <laughs> You'll just cut all that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> will just edit everything. Nobody has to worry about yeah. all the stuff. Voice stuff we talked about that I don't want minutes. to get out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you don't know it. You can't tell from Rob's image, but really yeah. he's a total hippie. He's got really long hair. He's nah. got, I'm kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so talking uh, tech. To talking <laughs> tech. I'm ready to talk tech. You guys are ready all right, to talk. Cool. Yeah, so let's go. What Let's... happened to Casper? Let's start there. That's that's right. Right. That's right. Stuff that stuff that won't be happening on Divi. Right. Oh, right. Right. there you yeah. go. I thought there that was go. a good okay. thing. Okay, right. we can okay, talk about it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, so I, actually, Neeks, you you brought this up. You want you want to bring this out? Right. So let's let's start to talk about um, first their their issue. So I think that it's not unfair to say that they are remaining. Um, extremely imprecise about uh, what happened. But I think now I've seen that there was <laughs> exactly. a breach on one of their contract module. So I think it's, again, one of, one of those smart contract uh, weaknesses. And so what happened is that they stopped the blockchain and they were able to verify all the blockchain and also go back um, to because they saw some malicious transactions and so because of that they basically voted to revert but the catch here is that they only have a hundred validators and only seven percent of those validators are required to stop the blockchain so in less than 24 hours they were able to stop the blockchain and i think it is um, it is an interesting point That's to bring about Nakamoto, right That's what do we call decentralization yeah. um yeah. Because we were talking last time about the pools, um, how you know they are centralizing uh, in a way the infrastructure. I think that having seven validators being able to um, take an action and stop the blockchain is, I think it is difficult to call that really decentralized. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was sharing a post that yeah. I had a lot of fun about. <laughs> the, they're basically making meetups between the hundred validators, which. It's kind of contrary to a decentralized organization. Looks more like a centralized organization. Oh, they so, didn't even yeah. say a hundred. They may have like they said, you know, we had a meeting with the validators. Like they only needed seven. They did, so, yeah, they, that's right. Exactly. I think, like I, I read that and I was like, is this a blockchain? Like what, what do well, you mean I think that's, a meeting with the validators? You that's know? what we're talking about when you when you start moving up in a level of oversight right so first of all there's the coin holders what kind of power do they have as coin holders their wallets well if they're on a smart contract chain most of them just have light wallets so really it is just the validators at that point and then you have to decide upon what kinds of things those validators can do what kinds of issues that they can make agreements on and in this case it's very few and that's scary I think that without knowing enough about what happened, which is what Neegs is, was just speaking about, it's very concerning for me. Neegs, you're referencing a smart contract. From what I read, it's the actual infrastructure. It is the communication protocol. It is part of their RPC. Do I know that for sure? No, I think it's been very... Uh, yeah, what's the word opaque on, on it's details. very very yeah. opaque it's not it's very yeah. it's very uh, generic what's being they shared say it's not right they precise it's not their architecture or consensus but there are other reports that are saying it's that so we'll well, say, I, it's very the articles fresh. i read were from consensus where they said that it was targeted its infrastructure for the rpc endpoints then pairing that with what you found 13 wallets Pairing that, of course, 6.7 million in illicit transactions was contained. That's the centralized aspect. That's the few made a decision because of some weakness somewhere, either in the system or some validator. I, we don't know. And so I, I, I'm not sure. I think that this is one of these things that will become more clear as we move on. The main thing is, is that well, some people may say, well, it was seven people and they stopped $6.7 million uh, at the time of illicit transactions happening. That was a good thing, right? I think that's... Right. They, people definitely said that in, in the, in, on Twitter in response to the post, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, so um, to me, that's ahead. scary. Yeah. 
it's fine. Yeah. So if you look at this with dig, divi goggles, right? If, if like from goggles, our block, yeah, our, our blockchain has never stopped, right? This stopped. Solana stopped. It's weird to stop blockchains. Like for us, that is a very strange concept That's of right. like, we'll stop the chain for these guys. It's so weird. Um, and then for us though, what we're going to be doing is like, our utility is going to be on side chains. All the things that may or may not happen, you know, go ahead and talk to validators on your side chain if you want to. But it's weird that all that everyone else who has utility on your chain, right? Look, Casper is a, is a main chain that has smart contracts on it and they're wanting lots of people to use their main yeah. chain. They, they just stopped it. It's a, it's for us, that's a terrible model. The right, yeah, the what right they model say, is what they ahead. say is that they decided to, um, because so let me take a step back. So basically, there is always that scale between speed and security, right? Decentralization. And mm -hmm. here they, they're basically claiming that this model with 100 validators is to make sure that things go fast enough compared to being completely decentralized, right? So it is definitely not a direction we're taking. We're taking yeah. Yeah. completely the opposite. Yeah with full right. decentralization and the way for us to address um, the speed issues, the scalability issues, it is through sidechain, it is through expansion of the network with yeah. other blockchains, like, like any system really, right? You just yeah. evolve the system, you grow it, and you don't try to stuff everything in one, Into in one yeah. part and try to... And and you honestly, know. if you need to stop your side chain because you modeled it after, I don't know, the, the Casper architecture, I, however you did it, uh, that's to me, that's actually fine. You, you go it's ahead, totally up to you, you. <laughs> you have your, you have your, your meeting with your validators, right? But the main chain c continues chugging along and all of the other utility on all the other service chains are all chugging along. It's doesn't, this doesn't, doesn't an, affect this, anything. What happened here is an insane proposition to me. Same on Solana when they stopped. That's right. I, I, I don't care how fast it is. You can even make your side chain super fast just like this, but it shouldn't affect other side chains or other people using, you know, providing utility, you know, yeah. on this main chain. That model, I think, I think we're going to see with time that that model starts to go away because you can see how insane it is i think i'm very yeah. emotional about this I, yeah and i think it's easy to see the model as you know the for me a blockchain like bitcoin or like dv is like a country right it's like an economy of a country the dv country or the bitcoin country yeah and then yeah. the the side chains are like in multinational companies right they're just stores they offer a service so if a stores closes is not a problem. But if the economy of a country closes, it is a major yeah. problem, right? Yeah. Correct. Because people totally. now can't do anything, right? So, but the, yeah, if, and it's even more so than that. You're calling it a, a, a business or something on the side. It still is its own independent entity. You can yep. make sure that it's its its, its own blockchain, essentially. Yeah. And so I really like your model, at least the way you describe it as a business. But it's it's isolated. It is. It has total freedom to do what it wants, when it wants. Even in Rob's example, if you choose to make one that has that kind of feature in it that breaks yeah. down it's because of something. <laughs> yeah, it has a stop feature in it. I That's mean, you your ahead. chain. You can yeah. build it like that. Yeah. We may have an opinion on how to build it, but... If you decide to build it that way, that's totally up to you. It's totally up to your community. It's totally up to how you design it at that point in time. That's that's yeah. pretty wild, though. Yeah, Let's I really, I really to, like how you design that or yeah. describe that, Neeks. Let's move on to the next one here. Uh, Starknet ZKX protocol. Yeah. Stopped. Like, I keep on talking about things that stop here. <laughs> so it shut you, down. I mean, it's worse than that, right? I mean, yeah. it, it didn't just stop it, yeah. because how do you stop a protocol? It is a smart contract. That just right. means that there were there were things built into it that they could start and stop the smart contract. But is that blockchain? No, no well, so it's on, what it's is on it? Is it, right? yeah. it, is, yeah. um, it was a very promising project. That was um, offering a decentralized deriv derivative market um, for Web3. And basically, they were connecting with multiple blockchains, obviously um, not through 
our model, but through this old model, uh, yeah. smart contract. And, and basically, um, they initially raised, I think, 5 million, if I remember correctly. And a few months ago, they announced that they just raised uh, more and they, they were at seven, seven something million. And they started a public sale about their token, um, which went live last month or like a month and a half ago. And now um, they completely uh, pulled the coins out of the exchange yeah. and uh, stopped their whole system. Because was I reading that they, they did some investor bankrupt. refunds before the uh, gen token generation event? Yikes, yeah. I yeah. think they did. They were hoping to that? hold some. Uh, I was reading, and of course we're, we're talking about it, the, they had investor refunds before the token generation event. So now, I there could are be wrong speculations, about right? So there are speculations on that. that um, this, um, private, this public sale could have been some kind of... Um, even to try to save the, the project Correct. and yes. offer a way out for early investors and most likely didn't work, right? Because otherwise the project wouldn't be closing doors. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. It's scary. So it's for... not a smart contract exploit, but it is more looking like a rug pull because you don't really know it where does this look money like it. went. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, should, we is, shouldn't uh, call it that because I don't think... Yeah. I don't think there is enough information, but it does look like one. <laughs> it does yeah, look like a rug calls pool. anything just because the value goes down in something, it's a rug pool. Or yeah. so, just because somebody starts no, focusing on something else. No, but here it's they else claim and, and that they just raised just, more. They did yeah. a public sale. All that in a matter of two months. Listed yeah. the coin. And now everything is down. So yeah. there, there's definitely something that hasn't been communicated. And yeah, the rug well, pool would most likely means that they would have enriched themselves. So we'll see. But sure. right we'll now see. it, it so, doesn't but, look great. But just again, putting on the Divi goggles about rug pulls. So you got to remember a lot of these things attached to main blockchains through smart, through smart contracts, right? We, Correct. I call those, I call those endpoints. And for me, the, a lot of people call those endpoints. It's not just me. It's, it's a name for where something attaches to a, uh, a blockchain through, through smart contracts. And that's a super, super centralizing point of whatever you do it. Outside that smart contract, whatever you're doing can be completely decentralized. But when you connect to a blockchain through smart contracts, you're creating these very centralizing endpoints. Almost every interoperability project does it some way like this. So yeah. I like to call them CrowdStrike endpoints because you know one person can screw up and then the entire thing is broken, uh, maybe in horrible ways. Um, and what we're proposing is that you don't connect to blockchains that way, right? In Divi, these, these, we call them side chains, but they are inextricably <laughs> attached. So there isn't right. a smart contract that gets put on there. Everything that happens is automatically decentralized. The chances of something like a rug pull are far harder, maybe are far lower, and doing it is far harder um, if you do it in a decentralized, trustless way, the whole way. Um, That's right. And, and despite yeah. what people think, right, um, Cosmos and their IBC network yeah, is, not, um, <laughs> is not using that kind of technology, are you right? Are you trying to roll into something else? I'm absolutely <laughs> switching to the next topic. He, he, did, which he, is he that... did it perfectly. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I think uh, uh, we, we, had a, we had a segment just not too long ago about a, a blockchain. And now we're back on that blockchain again. It was not yeah. the last one, but it was the one before. Yeah, yeah I mean, because uh, it's important, right? It is, it is one of the referent model for uh, current yeah, interoperability. But the yeah. problem is it has major limitations that is very clear. It will never be able to go beyond. And what we offer definitely solves that. And at the end of the day, also solves it for them, right? Yeah. I mean, in reality, their hub and the whole synchronization would never be um, fully decentralized. Like this model is is definitely uh, very problematic if you really want a fully decentralized system. But I mean, it is definitely something that we could connect to at some point. Um, but here, yeah, I wanted to highlight this where the IBC hook, which is one component of uh, the IBC 
Cosmos um, tool set to be able yeah. to connect um, ICS contract, I believe. And that thing has exploits and it was exploited and Luna, which probably everyone know now, um, <laughs> but maybe not everyone knew it still exists. So Luna was exploited, some user lost founds. And yeah, I think it was interesting to bring that because obviously it's in our interest to highlight that um, the models that are in place are definitely not um, viable uh, long term because um, you can't survive with those exploits um, all around and having to trust, again, a centralized hub. We talked about the fact that it stopped for five hours last time. The, yeah. the whole issue for synchronization is relying on the relying on the hub. And so it is very complicated to build a fully decentralized network I, with a, I see that kind similarities of between our first though. I see similarities between Casper. I know they are completely different platforms and protocols. I know they're not the same. So don't critique me on their infrastructure. But I see I see the same thing, and it really leans upon what Rob stated about CrowdStrike. There is a weakness that can be hit at one point in both of these infrastructures. In the IBC case, it's the hook module. In the Casper, although we're debating it, it could be the RPC endpoint. It's so odd to me, and maybe because of what we know and how we see side chains becoming um, a, 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 a fantastic competitor, if not a replacement for smart contract type technologies, a replacement, or or we would say it, it actually makes it unnecessary to have oracles or hubs or those kinds of things. The point I'm trying to make is that these modules or an RPC endpoints have so much power. You have a you have a situation to where it's leveraged millions in transactions. You have Terra, which has four million in assets like USDC and Astro tokens from their cross. This isn't like Luna, where we had the Luna contract leverage maybe it is maybe it's not but i i'm not reading it that way luna had where they were um obviously putting coins in the contract pulling coins out swapping them from one side to the other side and it created an imbalance in the smart contracts calculations and of course there was some strange minting going on that was so long ago i don't remember exactly how they did it but that's one thing this this seems like something has been given power wise too much permissions this comes back to trust minimized something there has this power that somebody can leverage it's so scary to me and i said scary before but it i don't think most people realize this when you have these off-chain situations you participate in that that situation and that contract may be related to other contracts which may be related to other contracts they're layered and one contract in there may have absolute power and authority to move, trade, or give some bad guy all the money. And that's what I see in these situations. Side chains, you may choose to make some really dumb decision and layer things like that. But if you set it up right where everything is on chain, um, it prevents those situations. There will be helps for that and, and building things out. But I think side chains is a replacement, maybe not entirely, but it has the scalability, it has the security. And of course, as they grow larger, it has the decentralized aspect. That is a great replacement and it protects the end user, right? So I don't know, I see similarities between these, even though the technologies are different. It is a single entry point that caused these loss, losses. That's, That's the centralization. Right. Yeah, and we can see that in the last 12 months, um, those hacks reach uh, 1 billion again, right? So it's definitely not stopping. Uh, we do believe that sidechains can stop a major part of um, of those loss, right? And yeah, um, I do believe that with having those more adaptive uh, solutions and again, a sidechain which can be tied to a business model based on the revenue model that is based on the service it offers. 
um, completely changes the the field, right? Instead of having um, smart contract which create um, you know worthless token about a barely viable use case that are here for a month or two and then uh, go away, right? Which is probably the the most part of what is created yeah. today. Um, I think having that model will really help the all the blockchain industry mature. So um, I can't wait to to be able to bring that to the industry. Yeah. Uh, so that is that covers all the technology stuff. I think we've got I think uh, so. a couple more things that were interesting about. Again, always love to talk about the SEC. Um, <laughs> so I, I just do like you know, our best friends pain there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always like to talk about the SEC, and then you yeah. slide in the, into that with yeah. We always like to talk about NFTs. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so this is another one that you brought, uh, Neegs. You want to you wanna hit this one? Sure. Oh, we lost Neegs. Oh, there he is. Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> <He's here. laughs> so basically someone is suing the, the SEC because they have... So here is what's happening. They are an artist. They <laughs> create music. And then they sold some of their music through NFTs. And now they are basically suing the... SEC and they are accusing them of wanting to take some control over the art market that they definitely don't have. And I think it's a very interesting case because it is, I think, a very legitimate claim that it is art and it, and it's not, I mean, there is investment around art, but it is not supposed to be the primary uh, function of art. And I think you can argue that in court and you can argue that the SEC is trying to, you know, go over the boundaries of their... It's trying to... Um, it's over. Way over, over yes. <laughs> totally, way over. So I think that you wanted to introduce you to... Oh, we wanted to talk about Helium, right? Which is yeah, a very interesting yeah. project. Yeah. yeah. So, and a little dear to my heart. So for those who don't know it, let me just do a little side background here. Back in, uh, I think they started in 2017. I'm not quite sure of the start date, but the idea was to use blockchain to, ward, to reward people for providing a service. And that service at the time, you, you know, you could do this with any kind of service provision. You could do like Wi-Fi or whatever, but they were using something called LoRa, which is long, uh, it's long range antenna, I think is actually what A is. But um, actually, LoRa is long, long range. It's long range um, communication. So these are very, very low power devices that can send data something like, you know, 50 miles away. Uh, without if there's nothing in the way so it's it's a it's pretty amazing you're it's like low power like bluetooth but really long distances and it just works differently so it's not in phones it's very low bandwidth but the idea is it would be good for trackers it'd be good for whatever and if we had this network all over the world then people could just make devices that just use the network and it was just there available and everybody providing that network to anyone should get paid to provide the network because there's some there is uh, not only some hardware you need to buy, but you need to connect it to the internet. Eventually, this long-range network needs to be connected to the internet, and that's how things data gets moved to where it needs to go. So that's kind of how the platform came around, and it was super popular for a while. There's maps all over showing coverage. There's the cities are well covered. People were making thousands of dollars a month providing coverage. Um, and with time, and so they had a thing called, they had their own blockchain. They had what they called was proof of coverage. I, it, you could start with little Raspberry Pis, but eventually the equipment got, they had to kind of like make it so that there were certified makers of the equipment because people were, you know, people do as they do. They try to push the boundaries as much as possible of the scam. Um, so there ended up being certified makers for equipment. You buy a, you, you buy one of their, um, nodes essentially uh provide uh the it's a laura uh point and then you connect it to the internet and now you have provided uh helium network to the people around you in this certain like 300 meter hex and then you could do more uh and more hexes the whole you're absolutely um rewarded for expanding the network so you try to 
provide a uh, network in more and more hexes, uh, either on your property or friends' houses or whatever. Puerto Rico is covered with these things. Um, and so that's the idea. So after a while, like when I actually finally got into it, which was way too late, the price had come way down. Lots of people were doing it. Uh, shortly after I got into it, they abandoned their uh, their network and instead put their idea onto Solana. And you know, I've already mentioned my opinions about Solana, but the key there is that the Solana blockchain isn't required for the network networking part to work. So the Solana blockchain is required for proving you're providing network um, and then getting rewarded. Uh, and so they that part goes a lot faster. They claim spoofing, putting up fake notes uh, goes down, but I haven't seen any data on that. And uh, that's the whole idea here. For us, for me, I think a side chain, a Divi side chain is a is a perfect solution for this. I think they they had it right with the idea of of um, having their own network. But the problem was, oh, a problem is, is to get in and out of their network, you need to go through a centralized exchange, right? You get it, you get a coin, and then they need to go list the coin. And if you want to sell the coin for something, you got to go there um, instead of using some native native uh, co native coin uh, or providing a path that was trustless the whole way. That part of the network could have been much better, much easier if it was a side chain and, and intrinsically connected to main chains that, that adopt this kind of technology. Instead, they just dumped the whole thing and went on to Solana. Solana, yeah. And uh, that's where they are now. <laughs> and I think it can even go further, right, as a, as a side chain, because while their model is interesting, um, I think it can even have more feature in terms of the, da the data that's provided, not only serve as a bandwidth provider, but potentially also um, connect devices and provide like some kind of market for uh, providing data. And like, it could be extremely interesting adventure. I, I believe that, and I don't know if it's right, like, tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe that most of the revenue on the Helium network were validators having to pay for getting in the network. And was it that? Or yeah, is it it's true. So most of the revenue was basically from blockchain rewards, not from fees. In fact, there's articles about how little it was used. Um, I can't make any comments on that. It's still around. I love it. Sure. Um, but uh, I, I, yeah, if the, I know there are some companies that were using it. I think Lime, a scooter company, was uh, testing it out. So I don't know why it's not being more broadly used. So I can't comment on that part. I just know it's there. And I think you're right, Niggs. Like that's part of it. But providing real world oracles of anything, uh, you don't, I think we talked about this before, you don't necessarily need blockchain for that, right? There's tons of places that there are sensors around that are providing data and you don't need blockchain for that. Yeah. But but all that sensor stuff is owned by the, the company that monitors that stuff and provides the data and you pay that company. Whereas I could just be a person and provide data and, and get paid for providing that data. It's difficult because the, in terms of verifying the data, um, but there are places where it would be nice to know the data and not have that's to right. trust the government data. A decentralized data. marketplace of data. That, that's exactly. the that's what the <laughs> yeah. sidechain could bring. Totally. And so from us, I think I think the sidechain, and then it's and then having the trust that it's not just some other token, we're gonna use a main token and make utility out of it, right? So for us, when we do this, we're we're gonna build the sidechain, we're gonna use Divi on that sidechain, and we're gonna, you know, sell the concept of like. Do Correct. that on a side chain, and that's how that's going to go. Uh, and we encourage community members. Like, what can I, what can I, uh, what can I measure around me? Do I live near a river that might be polluted, but we don't know because it's government data? Um, you know, hmm. pop a yeah. sensor in there, you know, and provide the data and get rewarded in Divi and, and safely. You can imagine that it can also create, and it's not blockchain directly, but I, th I think if we think about adoption we have to think kind of also intermediary solutions but it opens it opens solutions for 
um, like situation where they are outside of the blockchain. So basically they will be able to gather all this data from individual data providers and then filter it, like basically clean up that data and then offer it as a service to private companies, right? Who yeah. wants to have quality data and probably don't want to waste the time to filter through uh, fake data of providers and all that. Like if you have a decentralized marketplace, it comes with, you know, the obvious risk of having less quality data because now it's not all controlled and centralized. So definitely it opens opportunities for businesses who would want to do that, who would exactly that. They would filter the data and they would make sure that they provide data set for That's uh, right. companies uh, that are features yeah. and quality. So the blockchain part is just the platform. Like the, like we have businesses on the internet, right? So this is right. the same thing. It's a platform to provide data for people who want data or for people who want to aggregate data um, and provide better data sets. Like that's what we could do with this yeah. now. And we don't need a new coin to do it. We don't need any of that kind of stuff. We just need a safe way to move, uh, to reward people and for them to move their funds into and out of the chain that provides the utility. This is a perfect solution for this. And, you know, maybe one day we'll get <laughs> helium to reconsider, uh, you know, to well, say, this is the way use Divi. <laughs> I think that was one of the issues that, you know, random string, it's a side subject, but you had brought it up earlier. It's about a proof of the work you're providing. How do you know that they're always connected? If you're always connected, you know, how do you prove that to anyone else other than stating that you're connected? Um, and then you earn from that. There has to be a decentralized method that proves that you're a beneficial actor, that proves that you're doing some work that, um, that may be providing that data. And that's done through the side chains. And so everybody that participate is doing something. And so much of what happens in, you know, the smart contracts has no way to do that. And that's why you end up with systems like, um, like in Ethereum today, because you're, you don't, uh, you don't have proof of work anymore in Ethereum. So you have these smart contracts and then if you're elected and then you don't mine, you have downtime. And so since you're not able to mine and validate the, uh, the transactions that came through, they can penalize you and slash your stakes. It becomes a secondary method of proof. And on side chains, you can do the work, you can prove you're online, you can, you can offer utilities and services to vendors, and you can earn for that. And so that's, it's a beautiful ecosystem. It is Satoshi-esque, if we want to say that. And it's decentralized. So it's all the things that he was speaking about that, that would be, and it's all the things that other people have spoken about that we can actually put on blockchain and it's yep. validated and verified through some type of work that you're doing. Yeah. And I if it's, it's lightweight, there's tons of applications that are possible. I mean, what, what if you want to sign up to post your fitness data just at, to, for it to be aggregated for people to get under, uh, to understand anonymized, whatever, but get paid to actually pr to put your fitness data out there, yeah. uh, air quality monitoring, uh, water monitoring, like anything where there's data or new data being, uh, being deployed, maybe like uh, locations of devices or car or fleet of cars, like anything that you want uh, uh, to track or maybe the position of animals. I, I'm not sure. Anything that people might want to have interest in, you could have this Oracle network that provides it all and anybody can join it and provide some of their data. Um, That's so right. And I think the things you can do. Yeah. I took the business example because I think it is really similar to that because I think it will be interesting to see it evolve because one, one side chain can come with supporting, um, let's say helium and some kind of data. And then another side chain can come to support another set of data. And then a third one can come, which is actually now supporting both data. And then you can have exactly. a new one that comes with ours, which has a better algorithm to filter the data and all that. So you can imagine a competition that, can actually create about gathering data and offering basically a, an infrastructure that is the most optimal possible for data providers and data like consumers, right? Yeah. So yep. I think it is very interesting and 
it is one of one of the example right like we we talked about multiple things like decentralized compute but i think it is also a, a very interesting uh, a very interesting use case um i think that we went through all the topics um yeah. this time we tried to kind of mix more the news with the actual dv solutions that we bring um let us know let us know what you think um i think it was pretty smooth oh i i did too we're going to keep we're going to keep improving each time so hopefully we're doing that <laughs> that's right we didn't uh, have time to set up for the new avatars um no. but it will come in um, probably in a few weeks i think you're moving to um another uh convention next month and maybe we won't be able maybe we'll miss one episode but we'll let you know in time you bet yeah that's true okay talk to you guys later thank Thanks. you so much guys Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye now.